Okay, we have just built our model. So now we're going to try to make the prediction based on our model. So of the 675 pixels in our image that were used to make the model, we now want to extend that model to the nearly 30,000 other pixels that are in the image. So we're going to make a prediction here. And the first thing we need to do, of course, is format our data. So if we look over here at our summary for a step model, the variables that turned out to be important to us were aspect, elevation, ruggedness, slope, and the vegetation variable. And it only included vegetation three through six. So there were no vegetation class two that made it into the model. And the first one is was left off. So we need to limit that. So we're going to have to extract all of the variables and I'm just going to call them um, A, E, R, S, and V. So that's aspect, elevation, ruggedness, slope, and vegetation. And we're going to set that equal to get the values from the raster from the aspect variable. Okay. So we've extracted all of that data. I'm just going to copy that and come all the way down here. So this is elevation. This is rugged, this is slope, and this is vegetation. So if I run these lines, I'm extracting all of that data out. So to give you an idea of what I'm looking at here, here is the length of vegetation is 26,492. So I have a vegetation value for all of my pixels. The only thing that's goofing me up is I can't have any vegetation values less than three. So here's what I'm going to do. The coefficient by which these values are multiplied, the closer that is to zero, the less of a contribution it is making, right? If I multiply any number times zero, the answer is zero, and when I add that to the model, it's having no effect. So the least effective value here is the one over here with the 37%, and the p-value of negative, uh, or what is that, 0 0.000005. No, no, 0 0.05. So to do that, I'm going to say v is equal to if else v is less than 3, make it equal to 6, else give me v. So I have removed all the 1s and the 2s from that. And then that also has to be a factor. So v as factor of v. Okay. Now I need to create a new data frame, which I'm going to call new data where these variables are given the names they had originally in the model. So aspect is equal to A, elevation is equal to E, rugged is equal to R, slope is equal to S, and vegetation is equal to V. Okay. And to make sure that all worked out right, new data is, yes, vegetation is a factor and everything else is numeric, perfect. So now I'm going to call my prediction the results. And I want to make a prediction based on the step model where my new data is equal to new dot data. And the response is of the type response. So that's going to return a percentage, which is the probability that a gorilla is located in each of those sites. And I now have those values if I look at the range of the results. Oh, I have some NA values that were outside of the study area. NA.RM. So from zero up to 99%. So I now want to save that as a raster. Now I can go through all the trouble of using the raster command to create a new raster. But I'm just going to call this gorillas raster. And I'm just going to set it equal right now to the raster elevation. And I'm just pulling a value out of there. So I essentially I have doubled that. But now I'm going to replace the values in the gorilla raster with my answers to from the results. All right, and I can plot that and take a look at it. 
So anything that has a higher value is more likely to contain a gorilla. So that's the green area. And you can, we can see that elevation has a huge effect. And down here at 0% likelihood of finding gorillas is where we have the lower elevation values, right? So I want to save that though. So I'm going back to my original, where am I gonna save this? I don't wanna save it in use. So I'm gonna save it right here. So I'm going to save that result. I'm going to say, write raster. The raster that I want to write is the gorillas.raster. And I'm going to save it as, no, where am I at? Right here. I don't want it in use. I'm just going to call this gorillas prediction dot tiff i o n dot t i f okay. and so it has now written that tiff value that tiff image to there and if i want to take a look at that i can open up qgis again There we go, and open that layer up. Here is my predictions. We range from nearly zero to 99%. Um, I'm going to change the colors a little bit to make it more exciting. Let's do that, and let's change the color ramp. Okay, so blue is where I'm up to 99% likelihood of seeing gorillas during the dry season. And this area in the purple, or sorry, the yellow is where I am not as likely to see it. So I have made a predictive map. And if we look at here, we can see what we're looking at. Uh, in this pixel, there was a 91% chance that there would be a, a gorilla there. There's a 41% chance there will be a gorilla here. We're going to go up to 64, 6%, um, less than two tenths of a percent. So there's the data. So to get full credit for this lab, I just need you to send me a screenshot of this image and whatever colors that you create, and we're good to go. If you have any questions, we'll meet together again on Tuesday through Zoom at the usual time, and hopefully resolve any questions then. Thanks.